Hi guys, welcome to our channel Tech Traps. We present to you what's new, what matters and how technology can enrich your life. I am your host Suhani Khanna. So without further ado, let's get this video started. The world is moving towards development, growth at a breakneck pace, which is led by various factors, especially in the case of NASA. NASA is one of the leading space research and space programs which has also undertaken various ideas and models to leverage the growth of its space programs. One such model that NASA took up was Digital Twins. The idea of a digital twin was taken up by NASA in the 1960s for the Apollo mission as a living model. Let's understand what our digital twins are in detail. Our digital twin is a virtual model that is designed in such a way that it is an apt representation of the physical object that it replicates. The virtual model is used to study the physical model that is duplicated in detail such that they can study the performance and issues related to any component in the physical object without needing to break it. A digital twin can even later be used as a virtual model to run simulations, study its effects and generate possible improvements in the original object's physical component. Digital twins can be divided into four categories. They are segregated on the basis of purpose and scope, whereas they all do the same thing that is virtual modeling of a real-world object. Let's understand the four primary digital twins. Firstly, we have component twins. These are digital representation of the individual physical parts of our system that are to be inspected, such as gear, bowls, etc. The main purpose of these type of twins is to understand every integral part of the physical system, such that it helps us understand the entire system including its damage, wear and tear, etc. Secondly, we have acid twins. These are also called the product twins. Let's understand why. It's a holistic digital representation of the physical product. Acid twins can comprise numerous component twins which helps us understand how all the parts work together. Third, we have system twins. These are also called the unit twins. These are virtual representation of the parts of the physical system working together. It helps us understand how to increase the efficiency of the real world product. And our fourth type is process twins. These twins help us understand how the machinery works, that is how every part works individually to help the entire machinery work. Analyzing each step very carefully to understand whether every part of the machinery is cooperating. Hence, every type of digital twin is responsible for enhancing your understanding of the physical product. Whilst understanding the modern day digital twins, let me take you back to when this concept started. Looking back at 1991, when this concept was first presented to the world by David Glenter via publications of Mirror Worlds. However, Dr. Michael Greaves, then on the faculty at the University of Michigan, is credited with the first applying the concept of digital twins to manufacturing in 2002 and formally announcing the digital twin software concept. Eventually, NASA's John Wickers introduced a new term, digital twin, in 2010. Now let's understand how digital twins turn out to be advantageous. Looking at the overview of the digital twin, we can conclude that digital twin can provide greater efficiency, better for R&D, product, end of life, etc. Let us understand these in detail. First, we have better R&D. Digital twins help in better research and design of the product with an abundance of data collected about likely performance outcomes. Secondly, we have greater efficiency. Even if the product is already in production, we can mirror it and understand how it works. Hence, resulting in us coping with the loopholes on time. Last but not the least, we have that product end of life. Digital Twins also helps us understand what we have to do with the manufactured product once it reaches the end of its life, or in simpler terms, end use. It also helps us to produce material that can be reused or harvested. Henceforth, we can conclude here that Digital Twins not only save millions of dollars in pre-production, production, or even in post-production. In any 
journey of the project, especially when missions that take place in NASA require a lot of thought before taking any action. But digital twins do not only increase their efficiency during the production, but helps them to do any damage control for any post-production errors. If we talk about digital twins, then this question arises in our minds. Apart from the use of NASA, which else industry can it be used in? To answer that, we can say, observe that there are several areas that digital twins are suitable for, such as physically large products like bridges, towers, mechanically complex projects and other manufacturing projects. Not only that, if digital twins is a concept introduced to the world by NASA, let's understand how it is working towards the experimentation and training. NASA has invested with Glen High School capstones to install digital twin test beds. It all started with the eligibility requirements of students such as them being a US citizen agreeing to NASA GRC and all required guidelines. Key dates and application forms were released to start the training which was indeed a rigorous process but needed to be done in order to have a thorough training and a successful experimentation. The goal of this capstone is to create a digital twin test bed of a to-be-determined simple system that can be used initially for demonstration purposes to the public and key stakeholders and then later as a test bed for experimentation and research on various techniques including artificial intelligence, machine relearning, virtual and augmented reality. Not only this, astronaut training also proves to approve this concept as it has proven to be a mixed reality that is a combination of virtual reality that is digital twin and the physical product that is the reality. NASA adapted simulators adapted to which match conditions to actual spacecraft and it's working holistically and following a complete process to adapt digital twins that includes not only collaborations but robotic animation, physics engine, PR application etc. Let's understand the process and detail adopted by NASA to make this concept of digital twins successful. Firstly we have construction. When we say construction, we include build-up of information model for the project. Secondly, we have manufacturing. This inculcates a build compensate for required equipments for digital twins. Thirdly, we have modeling methods of lunar regolith. We talked about in our previous videos as NASA took it as a model experimentation for digital twins. And finally, we land on production of digital twins. That is how a physical product replicated in a digital model leading to an in-depth structure of the original product. Henceforth leading to a more subtle and successful scope towards digital twins whilst introducing it to the world for the use in every sector of society. While concluding this topic, we should also consider the future of digital twins and how it will prove to be an evolution in technology. It is very clear that a change in the fundamental operation of handling products, especially in acid-intensive industries, where digital twins play a significant role in alignment, the future of such a concept is limitless, resulting in an increasing amount of cognitive power, such that it is constantly evolving and helps in providing insights to increase the effectiveness and efficiency of the product. Henceforth, we can say that the concept of digital twins holistically will prove to be an excellent opportunity for the future as it holds the potential to change the dimension of production. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and share and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Tech Traps. Stay tuned for many more tech savvy videos on many more trending technological topics. See you in the next video. Signing off, Suhani Khanna.